to learn something. We're not content with just the headlines or the typical talking points. It's a refreshingly honest conversation about what's going on. It's about connecting our community and doing something to really make a difference. We're taking today's stories and bringing positivity back. Welcome oh, back to this. Take 5. Those are the mm. Ichi Wings. Uh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so happy for Chef Jeremy. Mm -hmm. If for some reason you just stumbled onto the show, welcome back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome officially mm -hmm. to Take 5. Before the commercial break, we were hanging out with the uh, longtime chef of the Mariners players. He was sharing some of the recipes. These are the Ichi Wings. So good. Uh, what good. Ichiro ate every day became a ritual. And then uh, something contemporary, the Kyle Seeger sandwich. The Seeger sandwich is pretty impressive with the sauces and all that. He didn't bite off the shelves. He's got the whole recipe. All you have to do is text us 206 448 four five four five and use our keyword eats e a t s put, put the, the s, s on s. there over mm. 200 of you yeah. texted during that segment the chef is very <laughs> impressed and let he's, us know what you think he's making this he's he's making this here's a thing. take a look at it you can see yeah, the mariners favorite recipes there are many more and hopefully we'll get him to come back and share some because there are some we did not get to today cano has a special sandwich he's even got some great stories about players in the past that would bring in there was a player uh, uh a pitcher from the past. I won't air it out. I'll ask him oh, if it's okay first. But a pitcher that was a hunter and he brought in his own bird and said, Cook this for me no in the clubhouse. Way. I would yeah, really? do that too. He's got great I stories. Totally I'm just that. picking this up because yeah. I don't think there's any meat left on this bone. Like, I don't think just clean it. Symbolism. Can you taste <laughs> no, the lime? He said there was one. I can taste everything. Wait, oh. come here. Look at me. You, you actually do have chicken wing <laughs> on your face. Thank you. You're really good. Way to right, go. Let's uh, move on, shall we? My belly feels a little bit nicer. Uh, connecting Seattle and Renton. Remember, we talked about this at the beginning of the show. So the goal is a brand new water taxi is being proposed. Now today, Ted Land, uh, he got a chance to hop on board for a test ride. Check it out. This is what the afternoon rush hour might someday look like for people trying to get to and from South Lake Union. I'm on a test ride of a proposed water taxi route, which would ferry passengers between South Lake Union and Southport, a sprawling development in Renton at the south end of Lake Washington. SECO, the company developing Southport, hopes to start a pilot water taxi on this route in 2020. And today they showed people from the community what that might look like. There are representatives from several major companies, community groups, and cities on this boat taking notes and trying to learn more about how a water taxi might be the most viable way to avoid Seattle's increasingly excruciating traffic. A century ago, there were dozens of boats ferrying passengers all around Lake Washington. And now companies like Seco are saying, why not restart those routes? Because there likely won't be any relief on the roads anytime soon. Again, this is just a test. There are still a lot of details they have to work out before turning this into actual passenger service. But at this point, there's actually a lot of interest. On Lake Union, Ted Land for Take 5. Now back to you guys. Nice. Thank you, Ted. So the team behind that proposed water taxi says it could also help people get to and from concerts and sporting events mm -hmm. at Key Arena. Interesting perspective. Yeah, I, wow. uh, I don't know. I mean, from surface level, I think it could totally help, mm -hmm. right? Take waterways, Absolutely. stay away from the roads. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any concerns that you guys can think about? I guess just if it would break down, you well, know, yeah, because I think be, about the fast ferry yeah. sometimes. We have some issues with the fast ferry and in Kitsap County. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have all but. those homes right there. You know, oh, I'm worried about the residents. And mm -hmm. seasonal, you know, certainly this time of the year you go, ooh, yeah, that'd be a fun way to commute. But yeah. it gets wicked around here for about half of the year, mm -hmm. so. But on a good day, so there's nothing like yeah. it. When it when I'll deal with the rain smoothly. if it's smooth sailing, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, you know, by now you've probably heard about that blown engine on the Southwest Airlines flight, which took off from New York. Well, while investigators try to figure out what went wrong with that, we wanted to take a moment to focus on the woman who is being called a hero in all of this. Here's the audio of Tammy Jo Schultz in those crucial moments before she landed the plane. Higher now, but we are single uh, engine. Okay, 20 is good. And um, tell me the runway we're setting up for. Yeah, we have a part of the aircraft missing, so we're going to need to slow down a bit. Calm, cool, collected. She landed the plane itself safely in Philadelphia with just one engine, partial power, and the cabin losing pressure. And here are the five things to know about Tammy Jo Schultz. Number one, she was one of the first female fighter pilots and served in the U.S. Navy. Nice. She flew the F-18 Hornet, the same jets flown by the Blue Angels, by the way. Schultz couldn't fly combat because women weren't allowed until 1993 when Congress lifted the ban. Two, she did face opposition years earlier in high school in the late 70s. She attended an aviation lecture and the teacher asked if she was lost. 
He said he could assure her there were no professional women pilots. Wow. Number three, Schultz is 56 years old, married to a fellow pilot, and is a mom of two children. And number four, she's a woman of faith and often speaks to young girls about following their dreams. And number five, when the plane landed, one of the 149 passengers posted this on Facebook, saying that Schultz spoke to each of them personally as they were getting off. She called the pilot a true American hero. I we agree. That. Wow. That's we agree. Cool. I got goosebumps I know. listening to that. Yeah. That's cool. Yes, very, very much so. I was going to be able to share her story. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so going along with that, have you seen the picture circulating on social media from this flight? Yeah, I think most people probably saw it and went, oh, how scary, but there's a detail that is being overlooked, right? Yeah, because this is a scary reminder for people to listen to the flight attendants before the flight starts, because take a look there, everyone is wearing those oxygen masks incorrectly. Wrong, right? What are they doing? Do you guys know? Did you pick we it didn't out? know. We're cheated a little bit because we I would, got to oh, see yeah. one and we <laughs> tried them on. Me and Jordan tried them on upstairs right. and they said, yeah. no, guys, it's got to cover your whole mouth. Yeah, right? I have and your to nose. admit, I didn't yeah. know. I, At first glance, I would have been like, oh, yeah, they're fine. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'll admit it. You know, I really don't listen to that speech very often. I well, it's become routine, in. right? So it's the Charlie Brown teacher yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. It's very important. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, all of us have felt like we've heard it many times, but let's hear it from the professionals on mm -hmm. the Alaska Airlines YouTube page, just in case you haven't been listening either. While remaining seated with your seatbelt fastened, pull down on the mask to extend the tubing. The yellow cup goes over your nose and mouth like so, then slip the band over your head to secure the mask to your face. The band adjusts automatically. Normal breathing will start the flow of oxygen. And remember to always put your own mask on first before helping others. Pretty cool. Wow. So yeah. um, our producer, Megan, dug these out of Glenn Farley's desk. Do you know, you know how Glenn so Farley keeps these in his desk? Aviation expert. And yes, they dug in his desk and said, oh, he's got some right here. <laughs> Uh, He's been so. working with King for more than 20 years, so I don't know how old these masks are. So, Jordan, are, go ahead and put it on correctly. Seriously? Wait, it's flu season. Up. What could be correctly. possibly you have to cover wrong? Your hold I mean. this up like this. Right. Okay. Okay, here we go. It's just dropped it's down. Just dropped down. <laughs> Pop I mean, quiz, Jordan, like go. So put it on. Dirt. Mm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the no, county, I need to do like Put a chicken wing in here, and then it'll be more doable. No, seriously, put it on like this, and you and you put the whole thing on. No, I'm good. I got it. Oh. Yeah, it's the nose of... All right, and then you have to tighten it like this. We can't hear you, Michelle. You can't hear me? <laughs> See, I'll, I'll narrate it. You have to tie, you have to pull yes. and tighten it once you get it around. Sounds it's like a good reminder to actually pay yeah. attention when you guys are going to want to fly again like because you never know. <laughs> You know yeah. what I think? And I, then you do your kids. And then you do your right, kids. Right, then you do your right. kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I think the reason I don't pay attention is because I, th I assume that if there's a major problem, we may not make it. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like most of these situations are survivable, Definitely. at least that's statistically. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this has been good. Then a you got to think about not only that, like if you land water landing or anything mm -hmm. like that, where you get a life vest, where to get the slides. So. One thing I thought was interesting is that so many people tried to buy Wi-Fi at that moment. Like instead of taking putting their masks on, they were people on the were Wi -Fi. talking about buying Wi-Fi mm -hmm. so they could make like their last isn't calls. That, wow. Isn't that pretty telling where we are culturally? How many times you see a situation and people are rushing to help? They got their phones out and they're yeah. trying to videotape it. So uh, valuable information for sure. Uh, we do also want to say one of our regulars uh, couldn't make it here for our launch week. This is the first week here on Take 5. We'll help you join us each and every day. She's in Hawaii right now, but Dr. <laughs> Wendy Sue Swanson came in on a sunny day to give us a medical version of the Fast Five. Well, the good news is every once in a while, like right now, we get a break in those clouds and spring is actually here. I'm here to talk a little bit about some of my favorite things with this Fast Five. Number one is sunscreen. Many of you are headed off to spring break or you've just come back. The best sunscreen is the one you'll use. Whichever one you really like is the best one. I don't have specific brand recommendations, but I do prefer physical barrier sunscreen. That means ingredients like zinc or titanium dioxide. They don't get absorbed into the skin. Two, juuling. You heard about it? Juuling is picking up across the United States and is now one of the most widely used tobacco products. It's a form of vaping through a device that looks similar to a USB drive. In my opinion, it's the illusion of tech or safety, and teens are really confused. We know smoking e-cigs like this does deliver cancer-causing chemicals and gets teens hooked to nicotine. Number three, more data that reading to kids out loud is what you got to do right from birth. 
Recent study out of the journal Pediatrics highlights the importance of reading out loud and playing with your baby at an early age. Reading out loud is not just good fun and awesome time, but we know it has kids with better control at age four and a half and better attention when they're starting off to school. Read books every day. Number four. Moldy toys are back in the news again, and this is not news per se. We've known it. It's an easy headline to get worked up over. Bath toys are a playground for bacteria and mold with time, so maybe just throw them out. And number five, social media. Clearly, privacy concerns are on all of our minds, and the number one rule of thumb, of course, is to remind teens that those awesome tools bring them closer to friends and family. Every single time you share, though, it can be captured and shared online. And worrying and thinking about addiction matters, too. So take breaks and, of course, start with the dinner table. Device-free dinner every time. Thing is, Social media and how we're using it is in all of our minds, and new research out just this past week shows about 40% of us aren't willing to get rid of our social media. And let me tell you, I haven't closed down any of my channels. What about you guys? I have not. I have not, but I will say, you know, especially when it comes to kids, spring break last week, I watched my daughter cry because of a comment somebody made on social oh, media. So oh, my radar's up, and I'm rethinking all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. How old are they again? Uh, eight, 10 three. and 8. And, and how old were they when they... Generation YouTube, my 10-year-old, and uh, it wasn't, to be honest, it was a relatively tame comment, mm -hmm. but, you know, like somebody called her a liar, mm -hmm. and uh, that's... That's hard. Yeah. And even that's, that, at a 10-year-old, yeah. that really made her upset, so yeah. But the device-free dinner thing, smart. Great totally. idea. Let's well, put them away. We do that Let's already. Put them away. Okay, well, it's not dinner time yet, so you can have your devices out. Just oh, okay. That's oh, good. I'm going to go text over here. Good. Okay. We'll let you get to the 5-5. Five, five, okay? Thank you. We're going to check back in with the 5-5. Five, five. want to say a big thank you to all of those who took part in cleaning veterans' graves today. It was Shelly. Uh, Jordan shared this yesterday. Remember, she called out and she said, hey, you know, we would like uh, people to help us with uh, cleaning the graves. So I want to show you some of the pictures because you can see, I don't know if you can see this, actually, a lot of people... Um, took part and there was a lot of work to do. So um, love this. And then also I wanted to show you this because two Seattle police officers actually just stopped by to help out, just unannounced. So great work, everyone. And just a reminder, if anyone has a group that needs help, you need volunteers, make sure you let us know. If you're on Facebook, you can join the Hive. Um, we love Facebook because then we can help keep track of it. But uh, let's go to Angela who is looking ahead for us tonight. Angela. That's right. I swear time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> it's almost time for the 5 o'clock news and I had a chance to catch up with Mark right here. Mark, how you doing? Doing good. Doing yeah. good. A um, couple of things. Funny, you know what? I forgot about this. Now I can't hear myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, George Bush uh, had a really uh, touching story today about his mom. Even mm -hmm. to the end, she was telling stories to the doctors that were a little bit off color, but very, very funny, and we're going to hear from George Bush today on that. Okay. Um, also, here in Seattle, there's uh, a cemetery in Seattle where people are going to try to go give their respects to their loved ones, mm -hmm. and they don't feel safe. There's mm -hmm. prostitution, there's a homeless camp there. They're trying to work with the cemetery to try to figure that, th that out, but uh, Eric Wilkinson has that story, so that's coming up on the news at 5 o'clock, yeah. just trying to pay their respects. Yeah, and you should feel safe when, yeah. you, go, when you go do that. All right, we'll see you at 5 o'clock, okay. thanks for stopping by the Thank Take Thank you very set. much. All right, see you soon. Yep. Okay. When you come all right, checking in on that weekend planner, as promised. Not looking too bad. We got some showers early Saturday, decreasing clouds, more sunshine. Sunday's looking great. Actually, not a bad weekend. Not a bad weekend at all. All right, you guys, coming up. See this little lad right here? Can you see me right here? Benicio, he got second place yeah, in The Voice in Germany. He's going to sing, strum that guitar, and play. And we're going to hear him and talk to him when we come back.